This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio, the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Okay, welcome back to the second hour of the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Newman Fuller, Jr. This is the Donate Hour. Oh, yeah, this portion of the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Newman Fuller is sponsored by your donations. And all you have to do is, while you are listening to the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Newman Fuller, Jr., you are on the whole page, just hit that Donate button and... Um, all the information that you need to come up will come up on the screen, and then you can donate any amount that you want to. And I got a, I have a list of uh, people I call a roll call who have donated to the to the show, and I said that I would begin to read some of them. And I am surprised pleasantly at the uh, amounts that some of the people ha- have given. And just to name off a few here. Um, Cornelius Baker did it again. Thank you, uh, Cornelius. Samuel Robinson, uh, Gene Luma, and B.W. Gifts. Wow. Thank you for uh, your uh, donations to the second hour of the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. For those new to the show, uh, Mr. Fuller is the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. It is a compensatory counter-racist code. Uh, simply a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, which is white supremacy. Mr. Fuller, as we continue to go on, could you speak a little bit about the book and then where can people, especially those who are new to the show, can get this uh, publication? The book is a book for victims of racism, and racism is white supremacy. There's no other form of racism other than white supremacy, according to whom? According to what I say is logic and evidence. There's no other form. You can't have white supremacy and another supremacy on the same planet at the same time. It just doesn't compute. The book, everything in the book that I have written is supposed to be based on logic. And uh, I always tell people, follow the logic. Don't follow Neely Fuller anywhere. Neely Fuller just wrote a book, and the things that he says in his book may not be logical. Some of it, a great portion of it, may or may not be. All of it may or may not be. None of it may or may not be. That thing that he calls white supremacy may not exist. One of the first people that read the book, uh, the original copy of the 1984 edition, I showed it to a person. Uh, It was a black person. He read it. He said, and he said, you know what you got there, Fuller? And I said, what? He said, a whole lot of nothing. He just got nothing there. There's nothing in that book that can help me do anything. Uh, You know, said, I looked at it. You don't have nothing there, man. You know, you know, I don't see why you bothered. And so I told him I thanked him for his opinion because that's the way it's supposed to work. You're supposed to use your own judgment, not when you just read Neely Fuller's book, anybody's book, or when you look at a television program, or when you look at a movie. You make your own judgment, but be willing to listen to everybody's opinion. Don't shout people down at meetings and all like that and say, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. No. Let the person talk. And the main thing, remember, to do, ask questions, because that's what the book that I have written is about, asking questions. Why? Because logically speaking, logically speaking, unless I have been, I have been misinformed, all problems are solved through the process of questions and answers. It's just a matter of you keep asking questions. You don't have a limited number of questions. People will try to limit the questions that you ask, that's a danger sign. 
that somebody's going to hide something. If you ask enough questions and get enough answers, it'll take everybody right where they need to be. That's the logic, I think. And the name of the book is The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. That United Independent is you unite not with people because people will let you down. I don't care what kind of people they are. People make mistakes. Even people who have the best of intentions make colossal mistakes. The smartest people make colossal mistakes. So you don't want to make any mistakes. So you follow what? Not people. You follow logic. Logic is infallible. Logic, fire will burn. Water is wet. See, that's the logical. That's Mm -hmm. the logic that you follow. Mm -hmm. Stick with the basic principles of the universe. So the book is designed to help the victims of racism function as individual persons. Don't unite with anybody. Unite with logic. Because whomever you are uniting with, better be uniting with logic. That's the logic of that. People don't really unite. And if they're going to accomplish anything of any constructive value, people don't unite with each other. They unite with logic. If they get anything that they're going to accomplish. Now, you can use logic one of two ways, constructive, non-constructive. And you can pretty well tell what's going to produce a constructive result and what's going to produce a non-constructive result. Yes. Okay. All you can right. get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com. All righty. And you can get the book in Canada now, correct? Yes, and you can get it in Canada, and we're working on the U.K. All right. Good. Not there yet. Okay, good. Okay, let's see here. All righty. Um, let's go to the, to the Gmails. This is from Dr. Taylor. And she says, uh, Mr. Fuller, you talked about what an American, Asian, and African meant and that those titles stood for justice. I looked up the definition and it states relating to or characteristics of the United States or its inhabitants. In other words, all three relate to the descent of the continent or country they are in. Now, Mr. Fuller, can you please relate what you said about people are not an American, an Asian, or African because they do not practice justice? Signed, Dr. Taylor. The whole purpose for, for people being on this planet is to interact with other people and with the things that we have been provided with by whatever created the universe interact in a correct manner. Now, most what you might call titles or heads uh, or or labels or whatever you want to call them that have been given people are given people for a reason. Now, I've been told that if you're an American, you believe in justice, which means what? Guaranteeing And I had to make up this definition because the word justice is so vague. Uh, So back in the 1980s, I made this definition up, and I think it will hold up until somebody comes up with a better one. Justice has two parts. Part one, guaranteeing that no person is mistreated. In other words, if somebody's being mistreated, you don't have justice. That's logical. Part two, guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. These are two guarantees. Otherwise, you don't have that thing that we call justice. Now, in order to qualify for being an American, you must be a person who believes in and, and this is most important, not only believes in, but actually practices justice. Now, when you look at the word African, That's got to be a person. In order to be an African, you have to be a person first. You know, qualify for the title of African. African people, all right? You are a person who believes in and practices justice. All right, let's move to the other A. I call it the three A's. 
Asian, American, African, Asian. Third, Asian. If you are going to be an Asian, you are a person, first of all, who believes in and practices justice. Now, for all three of those categories, if you don't practice justice, what's the point in having a label at all? And so I have put in the book, based on evidence, there is no such thing as an American on this planet right now. No such thing as an African, no such person, I might say, as an American, an African, or an Asia. Why? Because no one on this planet practices justice. Now, how can I say that? By the definition of justice, people are being mistreated everywhere. And people are not getting the help that they need, constructive help. They're getting help all right, but it's not constructive help, ultimately. Why? Because of what? The system of white supremacy. And you can't have the system of white supremacy and the system of justice on the same planet at the same time. That is an out-and-out direct contradiction. That is impossible. You can't have a world system of white supremacy. White supremacy is dedicated to producing non-justice, which is what we have. All the evidence shows that. Justice doesn't exist anywhere, not on this planet, maybe on some other planet, 27 so-called light years away. Maybe so. Avatar, Oz, whatever you want to call it. The planet Krypton in the comic book Superman, if it exists, I mean, maybe they, have, they do have justice. You don't have justice on this planet, yes, any sir. place. Yes, sir. So therefore, African, American, Asian, these people don't exist. So what do you have if these people don't exist? You have white supremacists. You have non-white people who are the victims of white supremacy. And you have those white people who are not white supremacists, whomever they are. Just okay. three categories of people on the planet. Yes, sir. Africans, Asians, and Americans do not exist by any logical definition. Why? Because these people would have to practice justice in order to qualify, okay. and nobody qualifies for that. Oh, nobody. No. Not one person. Okay. TalkTainmentRadio.com is a 24-7 no-charge worldwide broadcasting facility that have hosts delivering on various topics such as news, lifestyle, sports, law, health, wellness, religion, politics, and maybe more. Now, here's a couple of that I'd like to share with you. One is called New Money. Uh, another one is called Super Cool. And, of course, This is Libby. Now, all these shows are exclusive to TalkTainmentRadio.com, and all you have to do is go to the TalkTainmentRadio.com homepage and click on Programs for Scheduled Times and a little bio of the show host. Yeah, including this one with Mr. Fuller and myself. Uh, TalkTainmentRadio.com, that's radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Nelly Fuller, Jr., and we're basically doing a potpourri of questions, a little Q&A with Mr. Fuller, your questions, and then he answers them. You can get in contact with the show by calling 1-877-932-9766, or you can Gmail me at 7 Bobby at gmail.com. Uh, let me say this. I've been made aware uh, that a lot of times that... When callers call in, uh, the listeners cannot hear the calls. So I'm going to address that. I think somebody called in last week about that also. I'm going to address that in that when you call in, make your questions short so I can repeat it for the listeners, not Mr. Fuller and not me, but for the listeners who cannot hear the questions. I'm being made aware of that right now. So when you call in and... and um, 
and I and you start asking a question, make it short so that the other callers can know what you're talking about, or the other listeners can know what you're talking about, and then we can go on uh, from from there. So I want to thank my uh, listeners. I want to thank you for gmailing me and let me know that there is a problem on on the end where you cannot hear the other caller. So I will begin to repeat the question. So when you call in, don't, don't make it too long. While we're thinking about this, Anonymous wrote in and said this, uh, Mr. Fuller, why do you think white women march for equal rights and are claiming to be against misogyny, but over 53% of white women voted for Donald Trump, who constantly shows his misogynistic uh, mindset. Um, and then how important is it for black people to practice black self-respect? Can you give a few suggestions on ways to practice black self-respect? Okay, we have two questions here. One, the last one is about black self-respect. Yes, sir. The first one is about white women. Uh, yeah, why do white, why do you think white women march for equal rights and are claiming to be against misogyny, but over 53% of them of white women voted for Donald Trump, who was constantly or constantly shows his misogynistic mindset. Well, uh, to cut right to the chase, of course, a code of, a counter-racist codification is about simplification, too. You try to make things as simple and as truthful and as problem-solving as you possibly can, and you try to do it in two or three minutes if you can, or one minute or one second. So I'll go right to it. According to logic and what I've written in the textbook, first of all, when you mention white women in the system of white supremacy, then immediately you go to the premise that every white person who is able to be a white supremacist in the system of white supremacy, which is the dominant government on the planet, should be regarded as a racist suspect. Why? Because of some personal animosity or anything like that? No. It's not personal. We're in a system of white supremacy. So any white person, male or female, who is able to, to be a white supremacist should be suspected of being one until proven different. Proven different to whom? To the individual victim. That's an individual thing, since we don't have a master list. I'm talking about pure logic now. I have never been exposed to a master list of who is and who is not a white supremacist on this planet. I've heard people's names being called out, one or two here, one or two there, and whatnot. But then I look at those one or two names, and I said, no, I don't believe, logically speaking, that five or six white people who say that they are racist can cause all of this damage worldwide 24-7 for all of these years because racism existed before they were born. So how can these five or six names that keep coming up cause all of this damage. So somebody else must be a racist. But who is the somebody else? Has anybody stepped forward with a listing of all of the white supremacists on the planet so that everybody know their names and addresses and what to expect of them? I don't know of any such list. So therefore, as a victim of white supremacy, it is not personal, it's business, I have to suspect that any white person who is able, according to compensatory counter-racist logic, any white person who is able to be a racist should be suspected of being one until proven different. Proven different to whom? Each and every individual victim. Now, that's a tall order. Yes. That calls for a whole lot. It's not the victim's fault. The victims of racism didn't invent racism. The people who invented racism need to clean up this mess. Just because they, makes it dip, they made it difficult for white people to prove that they are not racist 
That's not my fault as a victim of racism. They need to talk to other white people about that. Why did you set it up so that, as a white person, some black person may suspect that I'm a racist? See, that's strictly between them. They're going to have to settle that. I can't. In the meantime, I have to suspect that any white person, male or female, who is able, underline the word able, to be a racist, just might be one. Did now, why s- would Fuller take that position? Yeah, repeat because that. Because there's no other position I possibly can take that would be logical. Okay. And if there is a position that I can take that's logical, I want to know what it is. In a world that's dominated by racism, somebody's got to be a racist. But nobody's pointing out who they are. I mean, they'll, you know, kind of make allusions and whatnot. Yes. And that, you know, sometimes a, one white person will call another white person a racist, you know. But what about the person who is doing the calling? Are they racist, too? Because the white person who is calling another person a racist, that white person turns around and say, well, you're a racist, too. Now, as a victim of racism, I'm watching those two white people go at each other mm-hmm. about who is and who is not a racist. Mm-hmm. Now, which one do I believe? See what I mean? Yes, sir. What is the criteria? I mean, and who sets that criteria? Let's not skip past that. Who sets the criteria of which white person is a racist and which white person is not a racist in a racist system? That's an important question. Who sets the criteria of who is and who is not a white supremacist in a white supremacist system? Have you answered that question? I say that all I can do as a victim of racism is say racist suspects. If you're able to be a racist and you're white, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of black people say, well, I know a whole lot of nice white people. Yeah. You know, so do I. Really. And I'm speaking from my personal experience. I do know a lot of very, very, very nice white people who talk to me nicer than any black person has ever talked to me. All right. I know some of them. But I suspect that they still could be a racist. Why? Because what's the chief characteristic of a racist? Deception. They are masters of deceit. So sometimes the white person who talks very nice to you is like a spy working undercover. You don't know. You really don't know. You might think you know. But then on the other hand, that white person may not be a racist. But the criteria according to the code in order to be safe, because this racism has been around so long and is so efficient, in order to be safe as a victim of racism, I suggest that you take the hardcore position and don't deviate from it, that any white person who is able to be a racist probably is one. Why? Because the dominant system on the planet, the only government on the planet that really counts, is the system of white supremacy. That's the name of it. We don't have any other government on this planet. So somebody's got to be a racist. It just comes down to who. Now, the second part of the question, black self-respect. Yes. That word, that word, respect, my goodness, we don't even know what it is. And we act like we don't know what it is. And we do such horrendous things because of it. Man, you're going to respect me. I'll kill you. You're going to show me some respect. I'll get out of this barber chair right now. I'll do a job on you because I'm packing heat. Don't you sit over there and say that to me. You're going to respect me. Now, What are you looking at? You're looking, according to logic, at somebody who doesn't even know what respect is. Respect has a source. The only source of self-respect is self. No one can give you respect. That's absolutely impossible. 
That's impossible for anybody to give you respect. And if they could give it to you, you wouldn't want anybody to have that kind of power. Because that means if they can give it to you, they can take it away when they get ready. All right? So it means that we don't really know what it is. So according to the code, based on logic, and this can be argumentative, but I think it's correct. What I have written in the textbook is that a definition, because everything starts with a definition. And what is the definition of respect? Respect is refusing to lie to yourself and letting everybody else know that you may be forced to lie to somebody else at gunpoint, but you are not going to lie to yourself. You're not going to ever tell yourself a lie. Why? Because when you start lying to yourself, you're finished. You might as well not even exist. When you start walking around telling yourself things that you know are not true, but you're telling yourself that they are true, Now, nobody has control over that but you. Now, sometimes we mix up respect with the word courtesy. What does the code say about the word courtesy? You can be discourteous to me all day long. And how should I react to this courtesy? I don't. I don't pay any attention to it. That's your business, being discourteous. Name calling is discourteous. You can call me any kind of name, call my mother any kind of name, my sisters, anybody that I, you know, that I'm associated with. Call me 500,000 different kind of names, one right behind the other. And when you run out of names, go and get a pardon and whatnot and see if they can come up with some new ones. I welcome you to do it. And you know what? When you fall down exhausted from calling me all those names, If that's all you're going to do, you will not have affected me one bit. Why? And black people got to really get into this because I made that decision. That's why I control this. I control name calling completely. I got complete control over that. There's no such thing as you can call me a name and get me to react to it. If you don't believe it, try it. Now, if you tell tell a lie on me or something like that, said that I did something that I didn't do, that's different. See, that's that's not discourtesy. That's just lying on me. Mm-hmm. All right, that's deception. That's misleading people. But calling people, calling Neely Fuller or, or, or anybody, or calling my mother or anything, you know, uh, the B word and whatnot, you know. Yeah, your mother is a so-and-so and -and so-and-so, and and your sister is a so-and-so, and and your brothers are so-and-so. Just go right to it. Help yourself. Work out. Foam at the mouth. You will not get me to even bat an eye. Why? Because I made the decision that what you say about my mother and all like that, what does that mean? Nothing. Why? Because I decided that it doesn't mean nothing. All right? You haven't made any move other than that. Name calling is all you got. 40,000 different kinds of ML is all you got. And we got all kinds of ways of saying just that national anthem, ML, in the Northwestern Hemisphere. Okay, hold it right there. Hey, welcome back to TuffTainmentRadio.com. We go where you go, and you can simply download the TuffTainmentRadio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Our subject today is basically a Q&A. You ask the questions, and Mr. Fuller will answer your questions and, of course, your Gmails. To get in contact with the show, one 877 Nine seven six six, or you can Gmail me at seven, Mr. Bobby, the numeral seven, Mr. Bobby, at gmail dot com, and I will try to get your emails read. Uh, I would like to thank you for the donations that many of you have made. I have a list of some people who have donated. Uh, Patrick Smith, thank you. Uh, Anthony McCune, way over in the UK. Thank you for your donation. Uh, let's see here. 
uh, Janelle Lewis, thank you. Robert Shade, thank you. And Yvonne Holly. I remember sometimes somebody told me, one lady, her name was Yvonne. She said, call me Yvonne. I said, okay. Anyway, thank you for your uh, donations. They add up. We are one-third of the way there for the second hour of the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. He is the author of the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, a compensatory counter-racist code guide, a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism. Uh, And there's also a word guide. Mr. Fuller, before we go back into today's program, could you speak briefly on those two publications? Yes. They are directed to individual victims of racism or people who perceive themselves to be victims of racism. Now, some people may not perceive themselves to be victims of racism. Individuals. You say, well, I'm not a victim of racism. Then the books do not apply to you. Very simple. This is total democracy. All you got to do is just simply say, it doesn't apply to me. Nothing in the book applies to me. I'm not a victim of any kind. Nobody's ever victimized me. I've always got my way. I don't have to. I don't have any problems with people. Anytime I encounter people, I get my way. I do do what I want to do. And particularly if I'm black, and I interact with white people, I've never had a problem with a white person telling me to do anything that I shouldn't do. I do what I want to do. I tell them what to do. Now, the black person who says that, the book does not apply to them. So, you know, I I just want to make that very clear. It applies to people who say, I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time in this area of activity, that area of activity, all areas of activity. And I believe I might be having a hard time on account of, something called racism and or white supremacy. That's what the book is for. The individual person who perceives that he or she has a problem with racism one way or another. Otherwise, it doesn't apply, and you shouldn't pay any attention to it. But if the person sitting next to you say that they have a problem, that's who the book is for. It's called the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. That's a long title that's explained in the book itself. But it's a textbook workbook for what the individual person can do who perceives himself or herself to be a victim of racism in every area of activity, first of all, with an analysis of the problem in each area of activity, or in a little example you might say, or sample, and suggestions about what that person can do about it. Yes. You can get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com, and everything that you need to know for ordering is on that website, ProduceJustice.com. All righty, very good. Let's go back to the Gmails here. Uh, Let's see here, who's up here? Uh, Dr. Lewis. He said, Mr. Fuller, I was watching a uh, series of short documentaries, and I came across um, one ad and immediately thought about what you were speaking about in regards of um, changing genders and sexual confusion. Mr. Fuller, if you could please explain and give your thoughts on uh, the subject again and why it is very important for non-white people to understand this agenda. Because if people can mess you up sexually, they don't have to mess you up in no no other area of activity. The white supremacists know that. So if they can get a quantum number, that's what they're looking for. They already know that, you know, we all have, nobody is sexually correct. I just want to get that straight. Using the word straight. All of the straight people who are non-white on this planet, under the system of white supremacy, are messed up sexually. We haven't even gotten the straight thing straight yet. Yes. The male-female thing, and it's not going to get straight. People call me sometimes, and I've talked to people, uh, male and female, and they say, well, what can I do? I mean, I, 
you know, I, I, I can't do this and I can't do that, and, and I'm having trouble with my boyfriend or my husband. I'm having trouble with this this female, I mean, and they start name-calling and use the B word and all like that. And I said, if you think that you're going to get it the way that it ought to be, now you're not transgender, you're not uh, what they call gay, you're not what you call bi, you are what they call straight. But even if you are straight and you are black under the system of white supremacy, you are not going to get your sexual affairs the way these, these sexual affairs ought to be. Now, you can fake it like a lot of people do, like most people do, because you have to do something because you're here and you are interacting with people. Yes. So in order not to just lose our minds completely, because we are losing our minds, we fake a lot of things. In other words, we lie to ourselves. Okay. We have a lack of self-respect, and we no way that we can get it. There's no way we can get it sexually under the system of white supremacy. Why? Because they won't let us. They won't let the black male be a man. They keep him in the boy stage, and the option they give him is that if you want to be something else, you are not going to be a man ever. You're not going to be a man to any female, period. I'm not going to allow you to be that. You're a boy, be on a boy stage. Now, if you don't want to be a boy, you'll still be a male, but you'll be a boy. But if you don't want to be a boy, you do have another option. You can go from boyhood, not to manhood. You can go from boyhood to being a female. Then you will be acceptable to me as a white man, because there's only one real man in the house, and that's white man. No other man on the planet. If you've got color in your skin, it's impossible for you to be a man. And this is true. He's not lying when he says that. Why? Because we are all prisoners of war, and prisoners of war have lost their manhood, and there's no way to be a man under the system of white supremacy. Therefore, you cannot be a man to a woman. And the black female cannot be a woman, really. She struggles to be one. She goes through all the duties of being one. But she's forced to be a girl, or like the white supremacists call them, gal. Gal, yes. All right? You know, why? Because we are prisoners of war. And it's hard for a black female, even though she does everything that she can, to try to treat the black male as a man. There's no way to treat him as a man when he's not a man. He goes around and says he's a man. He thinks that if he gets another tattoo or another hairdo and takes off his shirt in the summertime and walk up and down the middle of the sidewalk telling everybody to get off, with his shirt off and flexing his muscles, many black males worldwide, truth be told, thinks that that makes them a man. No, you're not a man until you get out from under white supremacy. Period. It's impossible for you to ever be one. That includes Neely Fuller and everybody else. Truth be told, we'll never be men under the system of white supremacy. You have to get rid of the entire system of white supremacy, if you are a person of color, black, brown, red, yellow, any color in your skin, you will never be a man under the system of white supremacy, and therefore you will never be qualified to be anybody's husband, even though you can go through the ritual. I've gone through the ritual. I got the papers to show that I'm somebody's husband. I'm somebody's father. That's impossible. When you're a prisoner of war. Yes. We are all prisoners of war, male and female, if you're a person of color. That's what white supremacy means. That's why we have to get rid of the entire system. We can't keep poking around the edges of it, thinking we can modify it. You can't modify evil. You get rid of evil. You better. Talk to him at radio.com. Hey. 
we go where you go, and you can simply download the Talk Team and Radio app to your cell or to your tablet. That's radio the way it should be heard. You are listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and our subject today uh, has been, as we begin to wrap it up, has been a Q&A session with Dr. With Mr. Uh, with Mr. Fuller. Your questions, and uh, I will answer or ask your Gmails, and Mr. Fuller uh, will answer them. So you can get in contact with the show by calling one 932 9766 or the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, at gmail.com. I'd like to thank my uh, listeners um, who have emailed me to let me know if we were getting through or not. And if you do get through, remember, I will repeat your question because I understand that some of the people who are calling, uh, the listeners cannot hear their questions, and Mr. Fuller answers them, but they don't have an idea of what the question was. So when you call in, make your question short so that I can repeat it on the air for the other listeners, and then Mr. Fuller can answer your uh, question. Uh, going to the Gmail here uh, from Dr. Small. So he wrote this. I said, Mr. Fuller, according to the code, do you think the word black was defined by uh, by those who classify themselves as white? Do I think the word black yes. was he, he, invented by people who classify themselves as white? Yeah, defined. He said the word black was defined by those who classify themselves as white. Could be. It could be. Black people, I don't think, considered themselves as being black. They considered themselves as being tribal members or just people. I mean, you know, we just took for granted that you're black, just like you have a nose, that you have ears, you have eyes, you know. And if somebody would say, well, what color is your skin? And they say, oh, my skin is, well, look at it. It's black, brown, brownish black. I mean, if you look at the average black person, particularly with a shirt off or her, you know, uh, uh, blouse off or something like that, or if she's half naked or mostly naked in a swimsuit or something, and you look at the person and the person is classified as black, even in one person. Now, this is something people can pay attention to. There will be different shades in only one person. I've seen that. I've paid attention to that, particularly on something like a beach. You look at a person, sometimes I've seen a black person, the back of their neck will be sure enough black. But around their cheekbones and whatnot, it will be dark brown. It's actually a different shade. That's the same person. But different parts of the person is a different shade. I don't think most people have noticed that, including people that work in hospitals. You know, you take off the person's clothes, and one part of the person, you know, their arms, or maybe just one arm, is extremely dark. The other person, the other arm is, uh, you know, is uh, medium brown. The same person. Yes. See, I don't think anybody, you know, well, somebody's noticed it, I'm sure. But I have noticed it because I pay attention to details or try to. Yes. And I have noticed that. So in answer to the question, yes, the white supremacists, they go around putting labels on people. In 18, what was it, 1860, there were three classifications, racial classifications, white, black, and mulatto, conjured up by whom? Who knows? I won't say that the people are white supremacists, but I strongly suspect they were. Yeah, you suspected, yes. All right. Because mm-hmm. they do the classified. All right. They have control of everything else, so to the extent that the racists had anything to do with it, those were the three classifications in 1860 in the Northwestern Hemisphere. Now, not worldwide, but in the Northwestern Hemisphere, according to the census, 1860 census, white, black, and mulatto, all right? Those were the three categories. 
Now, fast forward, 2016 at least, last year, how many categories, racial categories, were there? A total of 21, I think. I think that's the figure. So between 1860 and 2016, you went from three categories to 21 categories of race. According to whom? Who comes up with these categories? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, okay. And I'll tell you what. None of these categories make sense. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, Mr. Fuller. Okay, now. Except white. Okay. That's why white is always at the top. Now, yeah. if you're going to do it in alphabetical order, this is very important. Look at the census. The census always starts with white at the top. You now, are... what's the reason for that? Because if you're going to do it in what you call just, you know, a normal manner, you list things in alphabetical order. Okay. But why is it white at the top of every census? That's a All good, right. That's a good question. Regardless of how many others you add, white is always at the top. No, I never In know. alphabetical order, yeah. white would be somewhere near the bottom. Right. And right. African American and Asian and all like that, you know. Would be at the top. Would be the at top. the top. Yeah. In yeah. alphabetical order. Yes. But it's not alphabetical order. So what is the message here? That white must be the most significant classification. That's the only message you can get. Never thought about that. Otherwise, it's at the top. But you are correct on that. It it wouldn't be at the top, yes. Let me ask you this. Okay, now, you came up in an era back in the, uh, I'm assuming you were born in the 20s. What about the, you were probably called a boy and then a Negro and now black. Uh, Can you, can you, trace the, 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 I won't say progress, the progression of that, because we were black people, as I have come up, have been known to have been called boy or uh, Negro. You know the old adage. Uh, uh, and, and, the, and then uh, well, in the 60s, it, it was uh, black. I think James Brown, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud and so forth. So what happened in that, in, in, in that frame that, that, that transferred from boy to Negro to black? In the Northwestern Hemisphere, and a lot of people uh, may disagree with this, but the way it registered with me, because I was watching it very closely at that time, the word Negro was the word that was used to describe black people. Yes. Negro was the standard in the newspapers and everything else. Right. And colored. Yeah, colored, now, right. On signs like, you know, a uh, rear seat for colored on buses. Yes, uh, colored. Colored I, drinking water. I forgot about know, that. Yeah, right. colored. The word colored was used on signs mostly. You know, Negro was used in publication and in colored, kind of used interchangeably. Yeah, that colored boy over there. All right, yes. In the 1960s, more than any other time, it became prominent coming from the mouth of one person. Now, this is the way I got it. Okay. And this is the way a lot of people may disagree with it. But more than anybody, it was Elijah Muhammad who kept saying, why is it you call yourself Negroes? He said that over and over again. Mm-hmm. He said, white people call themselves white. Why can't you call yourself black? Hmm. He said, white, if they are white, then you are black, not white and Negro. Or colored. Or colored. He said, what does that mean? He says, if they got nerve enough to call themselves white, you should have nerve enough to call yourself black. Wow. And if they say they are proud to be white, you should say that you are proud to be black. Mm. And that hit some people like dynamite. Yeah. All right? <laughs> because it sounded logical. Yeah. And it sounded logical to me. Yeah. If they call themselves white, you say you got white people and Negroes. What is a Negro? Well, somebody said, well, in Portuguese, it means black. Well, in English, what does it mean? If it means black in English, why not say black? That's logical. Duh. See what I mean? Yes, sir. So it was Elijah Muhammad who kept, and uh, well, a lot of black people, a lot of black people who were around, now, who are still around now, probably don't remember it. 
But there were a lot of black people say, I ain't calling myself black. Yeah. I I'm that. colored. Yeah, that was a fighting word. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and you know, you don't call a, if you call a black person black, you have messed up. Hmm. See what I mean? Yes, sir. That's very Big interesting. Time. Yeah, I mean, I mean I, they want to fight you. Mm-hmm. I'm not black. I'm a Negro. Wow, that's a pretty. See what I mean? Yeah. Black people. A lot of black people would say that. I'm hmm. not black. Okay. Well, I'm not black. I'm a Negro. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you remember that? I remember oh, that. Oh, well, that <laughs> must have hung, hung around longer than I thought. Yeah. But Elijah Muhammad, who, by actually, when you look at him, I mean, he was what you call a uh, 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 heavy tan, I yeah. mean, or something like that, at the very most, all right? But he said, call yourself black. They call themselves white, you know, including a whole lot of what you call swarthy black or uh, white people, you know. And that gets to be a question, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. How can you be swarthy and be white? Mm. Swarthy, you know? Yeah. Okay. I have seen some people who are classified as white, and I think a lot of black people have, too. They are classified as white, but when you actually look at them, they are darker than a whole lot of black people. Okay. But they're classified as white. All righty. See, it goes to show the confusion. Confusion, yes, sir. That the white supremacists have put out yes, here. Sir. Okay, let me get this last Gmail in. Uh, it says, this is from Dr. Everett. He says, good morning, uh, gentlemen. Yesterday, I saw a self-proclaimed white supremacist named Richard Spencer, alt, the alt-right creator, arguing with Paul Joseph Watson of InfoWars. It got so bad that the KKK leader, David Duke, had to referee uh, Mr. Fuller, could this be a sign that the, that white supremacy is starting to destroy itself? Is this an opportunity for us to advance? The answer is, according to the code, never believe that, ever, under no circumstance. Why? White supremacists are mobsters. They run a gangster operation. Yes, they and are. And what do mobsters do? They kill each other. They have so-called civil wars, and even when they're not having one, I mean, on a battlefield, I mean, where they are squaring off against each other with cannon fire and all this, they reenact a conflict that they have already had. There's no such thing as a civil war, by the way, according to the code and according to logic. But that's what they call them. In other words, they have disputes among themselves, just like gangsters do. They have disputes among themselves about what? about how they're going to take advantage of their victims. But that's that's a inter, you know, that's a a, a family thing. Like the Corleones. Yes. Michael had his own brother killed. Yes, he did. Fredo, all right? His own brother. Why? Because he's bad for business. The business of what? The business of the mob. The business of organized crime. And the system of white supremacy is organized crime. Yes, it is. So they fight each other every now and then all the time. They argue about strategy and all like that. But at the same time, they say it's all for the good of what? The organization. The system of white supremacy. Just a bunch of gangsters. That's all the system of racism is. Why? Why do I say that? Why do I put that name on it? That's, is that name calling? No, that's accuracy. Because it's designed to do what? To harm people unjustly. Hmm. That's what the system of white supremacy is designed to do. So that makes it a worldwide gangster A worldwide gangster operation. The most efficient and the greatest and most powerful that the world has ever seen. Wow. Wow. A worldwide gangster situation. Matter of fact, I did hear that term on MSNBC early this morning when I was checking out some stuff, and uh, they were referring to what's going on in this country and how the criminals are running the whole organized crime operation worldwide, including affecting the the so-called government or presidency that we now have. I I found that very interesting, particularly since you just mentioned it, a worldwide 
criminal criminal organization. operation. Yeah. That's what the system of white supremacy is. Yeah. And the evidence shows it because it's designed to harm people. Uh, exactly. Well, we have come to the end of the program, and so we'd like to thank you for all of your calls and for listening. We apologize. Uh, the usual suspects were in play today, but hopefully we'll do better next week. So thank you for listening. TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, radio the way it should be heard. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. The most important question in all racial matters is why one should always ask it. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The world's greatest radio. TalkTainmentRadio.com.